7.35 p.m. We call up um, Senator Beckbone. who comes up with a prayer. regarding the judicial branch report. Okay, if not. Yes, floor recognized Senator not afraid of the Lodge Grass District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Secretary, members of the body, legislative staff. It's the question that I have, Mr. Speaker, is I haven't had a chance to divulge the report and uh, skim through it. And the question that I have is probably for the Judicial uh, Committee Chair. Uh, I humbly like to make this request if the <coughs> report has not addressed um, the appellate court judge vacancy. Um, I'd like to humbly request that we send a letter to the Chief Judge uh, where she is with the recommendation. I guess that's where I'm at. I don't think the Chairman of the Executive Branch has exercised its right to appoint the individual for confirmation. Um, I don't think the statute addresses, I know it addresses a 60-day window for the chief judge, but I don't think notwithstanding where she automatically waives that right as a chief judge, 
but it grants the chairman of the executive branch also the right to appoint. But if the chairman does not do so, I believe that still uh, leaves the door open for her to make the recommendation for confirmation for the court to be a full functioning court with a confirmed appellate court judge. Just my thoughts, Mr. Speaker. Okay, thank you. I agree with you to the point that uh, we are in dire need of an, uh, an appellate judge. And at this time, I think uh, we can refer this to a judicial committee and can go forward from there later on with the committee meeting. And then a letter could come from that committee and then hit the floor within our next special session and go forward from there. At, at this time today, I guess all I'm just asking for is for everyone's approval of this uh, quarterly report from the judicial branch. And I think uh, it would be safe to call for it in the form of a motion to approve the judicial branch's report, means that they're not here. We've read over it. And if everyone approves of it, then I would just like to call for a motion for approval with the a second and the question or a vote of approval on it. So has everyone had a chance to read over the report? Floor recognizes in-house counsel. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Secretary, members of the body. Uh, I just wanted, for my own sake and perhaps some of the senators as well, have some clarification as to what exactly the nature of the approval would entail. I would note that our legal office strongly disagrees with the chief judge's assertion that she has the authority to appoint for purposes of hearing a case without any involvement in this legislature, a chief appellate court judge. She is telling me that she is doing that in this report. If we were to approve the report, part one might be construed that we're conceding or uh, allowing for um, so-called, quote, temporary appointments, which are often used as a hidden around the statutory requirement that the appellate judge be confirmed by the legislature. Yes, thank you, House Council. That's the reason I'm asking for an approval through a vote, being that if it's not approved, then we could come in, special session, invite her in, judicial committee, and then go forward from there. And the uh, floor organizes Senator Stewart. Oh, Mr. Speaker, Secretary, members. Um, yeah, I agree. I think um, I think the, the, the rules the rules will uh, provide that. The House rules provide that if we if we don't agree with something, we refer it to the committee to hash it out. Right now, we've got a. Uh, a judicial report that we don't agree with. There's areas in there that are in question, and by you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with us asking questions. Anybody, it's a matter for us for us asking questions. And that's that's totally wrong on their part. But I think it's I think we, we should um, set it aside for the committee. So that way we can go ahead and have a committee meeting. We'll have the we'll, we'll have a report then in the committee. This time I don't see the judicial branch here. And me myself, I have not gone over the report. I just know for a fact that there's a lot of things over there that aren't being done right. And so there's a lot more that probably are, are out there anger. For you know, just for the, the other information that we have is we got a we got a court case that's been sitting over there for over a year. We haven't even done anything with how many others are there doing that? You know, I just, I kind of think we've got to put that in the committee and then go from here. Before organized Senator Not Afraid of the Bighorn District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Secretary, and body. Um, as Judicial Committee Chair, I, uh, I do agree with Senator Not Afraid from the Oshkosh District. And uh, I, I don't agree with the report on the Court of Appeals, the public judge, on, on, on the confirmation and, and, and uh, 
of this report. I don't think we need to to improve it as it is, and uh, that uh, maybe uh, uh, schedule a judicial, judicial committee meeting in the coming week and, and address this and maybe invite the, uh, the judicial chief judge and, and, uh, um, and go through with this and put this into committee. It's my recommendation as a secretary. Thank you. All right, thank you. As I've just uh, realized, too, for organize the Secretary of the House for Pro. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body of staff. Uh, just for a point of clarification, uh, I don't think we've ever approved a report before that, to my recollection, as a member of this body. So maybe just like an, an acknowledgement that we did receive a report. <laughs> And um, maybe legal has might might have some advice in regards to how we want to approach the questions we do have. Do we want to uh, bring them in for a question in regards to the, the issues at hand? Uh, but as a point of clarification, we never did have to approve a report from the judicial or the executive. Uh, <coughs> Secretary, before he, before he speaks, that's my other question. Is because, uh, Executive branch failed to appear during this regular session to give their report as well. So I believe uh, we will be hearing from the. I'll be calling upon the judicial or the the uh, revenue chair also, asking for why they didn't appear to make their. They failed to appear. It's their constitutional duty to come to every regular session to make a report. They did not come in to make a report this October session. So we need to ask why. I know it's election season, but still, business still has to continue. So the four organized senator not afraid of the big one industry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, on Senator Okros, uh, Mr. Secretary's comment, uh, I believe that these reports are stated in the Constitution to make a court report. And I think, I, this is my own comment, but in the past, when both branches come in and do the report, we kind of deemed it as approved. And we thank them and then ask the questions and that was over. I thought that was the process we've gone through. And we, didn't, we haven't seen that today for this past two weeks. I just want to throw that out. It's, uh, it's kind of, uh, Conditional approval is what I'm trying to say is uh, under this constitution that these two branches that they do have to come in. And <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, for now, right, recognized in house counsel Jay Harris. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Branch Secretary had a question to begin with regarding course of action for the legislature. Obviously, we're being accustomed to the Chief Judge coming over in person. She has copies of the quarterly judicial branch report. Those are distributed to the senators. And then she appears with the court administrator and answers questions from the senators after basically reading the content of the quarterly report. So that's an element of what <clears throat> we're accustomed to that's missing this session. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you've called for uh, a special session to last uh, nearly a month, total business days from Monday 22nd to November 27th. There's ample time that the Judicial Committee would have uh, or the legislature in form in session during that period of time to call on the Chief Judge at her convenience to answer questions. Senator Stewart noted that he hadn't yet gone through the uh, updated report, which does have some statistics involving the number of cases filed, what's on the docket now, uh, the division between criminal and civil cases. Um, he had a concern about the timeliness of cases being processed through the court system. These are all questions that uh, we can get an idea as to what's going on without the chief judge here. She's not one of the 
the chief judge of the pro trial court, uh, as a judge, is also the lead administrator of the judicial branch. So I think that's an important piece of element. Um, so my suggestion would be to the branch to simply take the report under advisement, and we have notice of the report, but the missing element, element being the question and answering uh, portion of the report that we were uh, given an opportunity for this session. So we can write, or the committee can write, to the chief judge uh, requesting a time <laughs> to come over um, to talk about the content of the report. And I think Senator Murphy, the Los Grass District, raises an extremely important question. The court is not fully functional without its appellate division, without the pro court of that is. Um, we have received written notice from the chairman last year that the chief judge was going to nominate Aldina Berenbach is the court of appeals judge. <coughs> we never received anything from the judicial branch that made clear that they were going to the chief, uh, chief judge that was going to make that nomination. The report that we received for this session says that the chief judge is in the understanding that the chairman has nominated Aldina Berenbach as the chief appellate judge. So some wires are crossed here. Um, whether there is a concurrent nominating authority or it's totally been vested into the chairman or the chief judge. That's really the legislature's call. Who are you going to take notice of in terms of a nominee, and who are you going to take action upon as far as a nominee? Uh, that's up to this branch, uh, whatever is decided. I would note that last fall, the judicial branch did advertise for an appellate judge. It was in the local newspaper. It set out the qualifications, and they had a proviso saying subject to confirmation by the legislature. So at some period, and that was far outside of that 60-day window provided by statute that Senator Godfrey alluded to, uh, I think it begs the question of what the heck's going on, that senators should be able to ask that question. No appellate judge can preside over a case without your blessing, without a confirmation by this branch. It's the same general rule with the U.S. Senate confirming federal judges. Uh, none are going to sit and preside over a case. They're not judges until they're confirmed. Um, and as far as the reporting goes, just on a constitutional note, uh, there isn't a constitutional requirement that the judicial branch report to the legislature as a branch to another branch uh, what we do have is a constitutional duty for the executive branch to provide complete financial reports on a quarterly basis to the legislature. And as a reminder, you know, Senator Gozan probably wants to make comment on this as well. The chairman was requested to provide a bank account statement to this branch uh, during the period of time leading up to the passage of the uh, 2012 budget extension bill. He responded with a letter the following day after the request was made in special session. He said no, but he said we will provide a financial report during the upcoming October quarterly session. We're, as we speak, here now in the last day of the October quarterly session. No such report has been provided. So, Senator goes ahead, Mr. Speaker. I think you know that we'd probably like to talk about that uh, non reporting. It's a dereliction of duty that the legislature wants to do about it. Certainly, there's options on the table, Mr. Speaker. Yield uh, the floor. Or organize the Senator goes ahead of the prior district. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, I believe uh, well, I concur with what uh, Jay has uh, his point of making the chairman, the executive branch chairman, making a quarterly report, and that was on that Tuesday of that special session when he came behind the podium. On that Monday, uh, we asked for a finan full financial report of the uh, year-end balance from First Interstate. And that with the question that we had in, in executive uh, session was just the leadership. And we asked for the uh, documentation of Aiken and Gum contract. And so we ended, up, we ended that meeting that day by 5.45 was it? <laughs> and so he said he would bring those documents so on that Tuesday morning I think when we presided and resumed uh, the special session on that Tuesday those were the two answers he had. He, he, he had a, a report and answered our question with that uh, written report that he would bring the According to the Constitution, that the quarterly final quarterly report would suffice. Hmm.
according to the Constitution. So he was referring and going back to the Constitution, what it states in there, as well as the Aiken and Gun contract. It also states in, states in Section 3 of the Article 4 of the Enumerated Power, where it says that the executive branch can hire you know, lawyers for tribal businesses. So those were his two, two answers. So I do concur that he hasn't showed up to make a full financial quarterly report to this branch. So I think that's the direction that we should go to ask him to show up, as well as you know, the vice chairman has to show up either. So I do concur with the legal jades. So to be clear, the executive branch has violated the Constitution by failing to appear for regular session to give a financial report. That's all we want to agree on that there. And the judicial branch has submitted a report but is not available to answer questions, so we want to refer their report to the Judicial Committee and then expect to receive a report or request for uh, for the Chief Judge to be here to, uh, to answer questions pertaining to the appellate court. So we could put that in and have judicial could have a committee meeting and then bring it into special session. And then same way with, uh, yes, with the executive, you know, the revenue committee, call for revenue, letter to come out saying you failed to report for, uh, for the regular session. So if we agree on that, then uh, I believe all we just need is just a concurrence from everyone that the executive branch's uh, report will be referred to revenue committee, judicial branch's report will be referred to judicial committee, and then we'll go on with to the old business. Does everyone agree with that, senators? Or do we want to take a vote on it? Or is it just a concurrence good enough with all of you? Concurrence? Okay. Secretary said that concurrence is good with him, so if everyone concurs, then we'll move on to number six on the agenda, which is old business. Which brings us to a joint action resolution entitled Final Approval of Amendment to Oil and Gas Lease between the Crow Tribe of Indians and Blue Water Petroleum LLC, referred to Natural Resources, Resources Committee. Chairman of that committee is Senator Stewart of the Black Lodge District. Hello, Mr. Speaker, Secretary, and members. At this time, as Chairman of the Committee of Natural Resources, this is going to be staying in the committee. All right. Senator Stewart refers the JAR back to the committee. We move on to the next one. A joint action resolution entitled Approval of the Articles of Incorporation for the Zalkia Development Fund Incorporated as a tribally chartered nonprofit corporation eligible for certification as a Native Community Development Financial Institution. Referred to Economic, in Economic Development Committee, Senator Covers of the Lodge Grass District. There's no meetings on this since the last uh, session and the we're supposed to come back with more information that they have, it. so this stays in the committee. All right, so Senator Corso refers back to committee. We move on to the next one. A joint action resolution entitled, A Resolution Approving a Sand and Gravel Lease for Tribal Transportation Projects. Referred to Transportation Committee, Senator Backbone of Reno District. Floor recognizes Senator Okro, the Secretary of the House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Uh, Senator Backbone and I and the committee spoke. And this one was passed back in May, a special session, and there was a error because of the title changes and amendments. That was why we thought this one wasn't passed yet, but it was passed. The title was changed to an amendments uh, for clarification that it was passed in uh, May special session. <coughs> so this will be stricken off the. All right, so we take that off the agenda. Thank you. We move on to the next one. A joint action resolution of the Pro Tribal Executive Branch and the Pro Tribal Legislature entitled Resolution Supporting the Establishment of a Pro Tribal Conservation District and Empowering the Crow Land Use Board to Assume the Duties of the Crow Conservation District. Referred to Service Land Committee. 
Senate chair goes ahead of the prior district. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, we only have that one meeting on this, and we're going to keep it in committee for further uh, review and discussion with the uh, Service Land Committee members. So, the Chairman of the Surface Landing Committee, Senator Gozad, refers to the committee. We move on to the next one. Joint accident resolution of the Pro Tribal Legislature and the Pro Tribal Executive Branch entitled Proposed Memorandum of Agreement with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service regarding protection of eagles and enforcement of federal and tribal laws against illegal harvesting and trafficking of eagles and eagle parts, referred to Fish and Wildlife Parks Recreation. Senator Kyle Grounds of the Reno District. Thank you, Speaker. On this, uh, you have a uh, feedback from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service of the Chief. You're kind of, you're welcome <coughs> in the future. Thank you. All right, so do you refer it back to committee? <coughs> Senator? Yes. Okay. JR is referred back to committee. Next one, a bill for an act entitled an act to amend the Title 23 of the Pro Law and Order Code by revising the Pro Tribal Gaming Ordinance. We refer to the Gaming Committee, Senator Backbone of the Viola District. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, this will also be going back to committee. All right, Senator Backbone refers back to the committee. We move on to the next one. A bill for an act entitled An Act to Amend the Zalakia Tribal Cultural Resource Protection Act. We refer to Treaty Cultural Committee, Senator Carlos of the Lodge Grass District. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this has been uh, in the committee and uh, I think there are some people that was involved with this that uh, were fired or removed from the negative and they haven't replaced them. So we need to keep this committee because uh, this is a upward important part of the cultural resource of the protection of our land uh, here and outside too. So the state committee also. All right. So Senator Cozzo refers back to committee. We move on to the next one. A bill for an act titled an act to amend Title 10 of the Crow Law and Order Code to protect against non-crow and non-Indian felony convicts receiving parental custody of crow children. Health and Human Services Committee, Senator Not Afraid of the Lodgegrass District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body. The committee continues its work um, with the executive branch. I know that um, it's been a busy season, and I believe that um, Executive Legal is working on some alternative language that we can compromise on that will um, ensure its success at a later date. In the, in the interests of justice at this time, I'd like to report to the body that it would be best that it would stay in committee so that we can continue the important work on this bill so that it eventually will become tribal law. Thank you, Senator. Not afraid. So Senator refers that back to committee. Now we move on to the last one. Joint action resolution entitled Resolution to Update the Crow Indian Reservation IRR Long Range Transportation Plan. <coughs> Senator Backbone of the Reno District, Chairman of the Transportation Committee. Thank you, Speaker of the House, Secretary, Body. <coughs> uh, at this time, uh, I refer back into committee. Uh, since we last met on it in July, uh, one of the workers from the IRR transportation program uh, came up, and it never came up to do any committee meetings. And I, so I just want to refer it into committee, back into committee. <coughs> Thank you. All right, floor organizer Senator Stewart of the yeah. Black District. There is an oversight um, on the agenda for the top peak. Yeah, I believe that's all this is.
orders to regulate rates and services provided by commercial tooling companies. And I believe this is in, is this in transportation? <laughs> Before organize Senator Backbone of the Reno District, Chairman of the Transportation Committee. Thank you, Speaker, Secretary, Body. Um, this bill uh, was brought up. We, we had a committee meeting on it on, uh, on the 17th of October 2012, and uh, we had a uh, 13 uh, uh, approved to go to, to to pass it as it was and put it back into committee and we want to uh, work on this bill some more but we wanted to put it in committee so in special session we can now uh, bring it back out after a couple more uh, and and for the record um, yesterday i went over to uh, the clerk and recorder and i got the boundary of the reservation line and uh, bighorn Town is within the boundaries of the reservation Thank you, Senator. So that is referred back to the committee by the chairman of the Transportation Committee. Has it been read into the record? Introduced. It's been there. Oh, all right. What is the one to have to do then? Who recognizes Secretary of the House Oak Pro? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For the record, uh, the bill has never been introduced onto the floor. Therefore, for for that, it would have to be introduced, set into record for adoption. Uh, we'll see. All right, so Senator Backbone, who's going to read this into record? The Senator Pretty Paint. Senator Pretty Paint. Bill for an act titled an act to amend the code tribal traffic ordinance to regulate rates and services provided by the commercial towing companies. Motion. Motion to adopt by Senator Gozad, second by Senator Backbone. Question. Question by Senator Not Afraid of the Lodge Grass District. I think I'm out of work. Sorry. Legislative finding. Whereas the co title legislator, parentheses legislator, is vested with the power and the duty to promulgate, adopt, laws, resolution, ordinance, codes, regulation, and guidelines in accordance with the 2000 Electoral Constitution and Federal Law pursuant to Article 5, Section 2, Subsection A of the 2001 Constitution. And whereas the co title executive branch, parentheses executive branch, has the authority, responsibility, to, pursuant to Article 4, Section 4, Subsection A of the, of the 2001 Constitution that enforces all the laws, ordinance, resolution, regulations, or guidelines passed by the legislative branch <laughs> providing for a levy of taxes and licensing of members and non-members for various purposes. And whereas the executive branch has the authority and the responsibility pursuant to Article 4, Section 4, Subsection A of the 2001 Constitution <coughs> to implement all laws, resolution, codes, policies duly adopted by the legislator. And whereas the pro tribal members have been subjected to a very high towing bills and storage charges in situations where no consent or authority was made by the owner or the operator of the vehicle towed. And whereas the legislators now seek to prohibit unauthorized towing of wrecked vehicles unless determined to be a drug vehicle and to ensure that all rates for these <coughs> services are reasonable and known by the owner or the operator prior to any towing. Now, therefore, be it hereby in, intact by the Crow Tribal Legislator as the code tribal law. Section 1, purpose. The purpose of this legislation is to prevent unauthorized and or exorbitant fees or charges for automobile towing or towing related services to be assessed or <coughs> imposed upon any person on the Crow Indian Reservation. 
Section 2, Amendment to Title 14 of the Pro Law and Order Code. Title 14, Chapter 2, Part 103 of the Recognition <coughs> of the Law and Order Code, parentheses, Civil Regulation of Vehicle <coughs> Traffic, shall be made to read as follows. 14-2-103, Commercial Towing Services. A, an operator of the vehicle used to provide commercial towing services for another vehicle following an accident must give immediate notice to the quickest available means of communication to the pro tribal law enforcement officials or federal enforcement officials before moving the vehicle unless traffic is being obstructed in which a case the vehicle shall be moved to the nearest safe loco location pending for further instructions from the owner of the wrecked vehicle. The operator of the wrecked vehicle may be give instructions to the towing service if the owner is unavailable. The owner of the wrecked vehicle shall have a reasonable amount of time to arrange for non-commercial towing before the vehicle may be considered as a abandoned junk vehicle. B. An operator of the vehicle used to provide commercial towing service for another vehicle for any other reason than as provided for in subsection A above must receive sign authorization from the owner of the vehicle prior to assessing any charges or fees for the towing service. The commercial towing service must provide precise information as to any amount to be charged prior to receiving <coughs> authorization from the owner of the vehicle. C. If the law enforcement officials order the tow of a private owned vehicle for any reason without the consent of the owner operator, such as towing service costs, any storage charge or fees shall not under any circumstance be paid by the owner or the operator of the vehicle tow, provided that reasonable towing service costs and related storage charges or fees may be paid to a licensed towing service provider or the Crow tribe as a condition of sentencing for the violation of tribal, criminal, or civil law. D, the Crow Tribal Department of Public Safety shall issue license to all commercial towing service providers and their operators upon the uh, showing to the Department of their ability to safely tow vehicles to only charge reasonable rates for services and other comply at all times with the code tribal law. E, the code tribal <coughs> Department of Public Safety shall ma maintain a list of all commercial towing services providers licensed to do business on a code Indian reservation. F, any person found to be in in non-compliance with the requirements of this part shall be liable for a fine of not more than $1,000 nor less than 100 G. This part of Title 14 shall not be construed to prevent any tribal sanction removal of junk vehicle from the public or tribal road race in accordance with the approval of tribal junk Vehicle abandonment program. Uh, section 3, effective date. This act shall take effect immediately upon being duly adopted by the Code Travel Legislature and signed by the Code Travel Executive Branch Chairman after the veto override process as provided for under tribal law. All right. So that brings us to the 30 minute presentation by a sponsor. And at this time, if you want to waive that, we can go on and just go on to recommendation of the committee chair. Yes. Okay. All right. So with that, that brings us to the committee chair for a recommendation to the floor at this time. Thank you, Speaker, uh, Sponsor, Secretary, Body. Uh, recommendation at this time is uh, put it back into committee and bring it out in special session. All right, this bill has been referred back to the committee by the committee chair, Senator Backbone. Thank you. 
Four recognizes a senator not afraid of the Lodzgrass district. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body. With the recommendation in mind, I do so move to refer this particular item to committee and may be brought back for reconsideration during special session. So is that in the form of a motion, Senator Nautifer? Yes, it is. Okay, we've got a motion on the floor to refer this to committee and be brought back on the floor on the next special session or regular session. Do we have a second? Second by Senator Not Afraid of the Bridgeborn District. Do we have a question? Question by Senator Rosehead of the Arrow Creek District. All those in favor of referring this to committee and bringing back onto the floor on the next special session or regular session, raise your right hand. All those opposed? All those abstaining. So with a vote of 13 yes, 0 no, and 0 abstain, this bill will be referred back to committee and brought back to the floor on the next special session or regular session. <laughs> and that brings us to legislative resolutions. Secretary of the House, do we just have one legislative resolution to present today? This is the speaker of the one and final resolution of the Crochella Legislature to endorse candidates for the public office in the upcoming federal and Montana state elections. <coughs> All right, who's going to present <coughs> Senator Alden of the Big One District? Okay. We need a motion on the floor to adopt this LR to the agenda motion by Senator Stewart of the Black Lodge District. Do we have a second? Second by Senator Not Afraid of the Big Horn District. <coughs> Question by Senator Not Afraid of the Lodge Grass District. All those in favor of adopting this LR to the agenda, raise your right hand. Abstaining. Motion carries with a vote of 13. Yes, zero no, zero abstain. Go ahead and proceed, Senator Alden of the Big District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, in terms of body, I guess, but I guess we got a live stream up, so welcome everyone to the too. So, October 12th, regular session of the Co Tribal Legislature, LR. Introduced by Brigham District Representative Senator Pop Alden Jr., Senator Martin Alfred, and Senator Vincent Cookerarm. A resolution titled A Resolution of the Crow Tribe Legislature to Endorse Candidates of Public Office in the Upcoming Federal and Montana State Elections. Motion to adopt, Speaker. Motion by Senator Stewart, seconded by Senator Backbone of the Wilder District. Go ahead and proceed. Legislative findings. Whereas the Crow Tribal Legislature, and after legislature, has the power and duty Article 5, Section 2 of the 2001 Crow Tribal Constitution, <coughs> and after 2001 Constitution, to promulgate and adopt resolutions in accordance for the governance of the Crow Tribe. And whereas the policy of the legislature has provided for in Section 1 5 of the Legislative Resolution. 10-20, enacted in special session August 10, 2010, is to review and adopt resolutions for the purpose of making recommendations, statements of support, or endorsements in any public election. It's kind of highlighted there. Which may affect the Crow Tribe and its members, and whereas the upcoming federal and Montana general elections on November 6 include several Crow Tribal members as candidates, and an American Indian seeking statewide office, and an adopted member of the Crow Tribe seeking re election as President of the United States, and whereas the legislature seeks to increase the turnout of Crow Tribal members in the upcoming elections and to help ensure that 
The successful candidates are respons responsive to the needs of the co people. Now, therefore, it be hereby resolved by the co tribal legislature in the regular session. The co tribal legislature strongly encourages all members of the co tribal general council to vote in the upcoming federal and Montana general election to be held on Tuesday, November 6, 2012. Be it further resolved, the Crow Tribal Legislature hereby formally and without reserva reservation endorses President Barack Obama, also known as for re-election as President of the United States. Be it further resolved, the Crow Tribal Legislature here formally and without Reservation endorses Denise Juno for the position of Montana Superintendent of Public Instruction. Be it further resolved, the pro tribal legislature here uniformly and without reservation endorses Senator Sharon Stewart Perigner for re election to the Montana Senate District 21. Be it further resolved, the pro tribal legislature here hereby formally and without reservation endorses Representative Carolyn P. Lopez for re election to the Montana House District 42. Be it finally resolved, the Secretary of the Crow Tribal Legislature is hereby directed to take care of adequate public, public notice of this tribal resolution is made to the public, especially the Crow Tribal General Council. Thank you. That brings us to the 30 minute presentation. At this time, um, I'd like to yield. First of all, before I yield my time to Senator, uh, Senator Nottaford of um, Dodgegrass District, uh, this is as you all know, we have passed the LR where we can, uh, it states in the warehouse here that we uh, support and endorse, endorse people that are running for statewide elections. And this is one of those LRs that we're endorsing, and, uh, especially our pro candidates. That uh, if we get the support from the branch, it goes a long ways. And uh, once we publish this uh, publicly and whatnot, uh, it carries a lot of weight too. So. Uh, with that, I'll yield my time to the Senator Not Afraid from Lashgrass District. We'll recognize Senator Not Afraid of the Valley of the Chiefs District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the body, I believe we are on live stream also. And um, thank you to the Crow Tribal General Council members for tuning in. Mr. Speaker, at this time, I would like to say that it is very important that our involvement is recognized as a branch of government. Our involvement is recognized as elected representatives of our respective districts. Um, those that are members of federally recognized tribes like Denise Juno. She's a member of the Blackfeet Nation. Deva is again. Uh, Fort Berthold, Mandan Hidatsa, Rikaraw Nation. Kogagalu, Deva, Lainam Salagum, Bhat Davish, Ko, Sharon Stewart, Paraguay. Deva, Carolyn Pease Lopez. Kodish Ko, Deva, Salagish, Chbalakhtas. President of the United States, Barack Obama, uh, adopted Crow tribal member. If I could, Mr. Speaker, the importance of remembering where we come from as a Crow nation and, and our rights of uh, being able to vote in this great nation. In the 1980s, Mr. Speaker, um, Kolalesh majority as far as voting on this Crow Indian Reservation on the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation. They are Absalogan, Absalogum, what did, what you stated, what you did, what you did. And lawsuit, Gunam Neo, Wendy Boy versus Bighorn County. Federal Indian lawsuit. Federal Court, Kshtal, Kawaga. Uh, Central Committee, Big Horn County, Lonalau, Kolala, Agalabosa, the dad of Senator Gozahed, hey lady. And I could name a few more names that were on that committee that were federal witnesses in the lawsuit that went to federal court. 
the big one writes bowling case coat coat a lamp solo get well I walk to it well I walk sick up to that go out there when I walk to it it was then Crow tribal members exercising their right to vote as United States citizens were recognized the fact that there was discrimination because of how precinct lines were drawn was also addressed therefore what happened next were a large grass school board on the whole watch team cut to that of the chase when it moved from Edgar to the opening of Plenty Coos High School. registered campaign Discover the Indian vote campaign county-wide elections all of our representatives fall in our early um, candidates were the likes of Bill Yellowtown Angela Russell Ramona Howell our first Crow Indian candidate that was endorsed through adoption Bill Joy Sheriff Kukala which Balak the Sukup Salovish history Yiddish Ko Dela Salovish Kalagunkal School Board Control Luke to Lodge Grass Bapo with that prior Plenty Coos High School Control with them Kalagunyu controlled your destiny 874 money is a new deal and the Lazulu with the Zoom of Salovish no Abish deal Dela all of that Solid, you take Big Horn County Sheriff. It, uh, Malaysia Lodge, she the Lodge. Solid, she did kill you. Kusilik, how discriminate, kill you. Malaysia Solid, she did change you. How are they going to change you? Solid, she did kill you. They are. Solid, she registered it. That bad thing, you know. Kowabish, Bawachi was song, Salabish, and Awabish, you will lay watch in his token. He lagged a mulalu, Larson, Bigazaki, Larson, but I was set. Sheriff, good at it to five turns, good jail. Machishilish, last go all. Machishilish, look be with his chiwai issue. Kowabe, of Salabish, but you legal at that. Oshpagalas. It the five turns, Gujela. Dela, Balaja was eight chat, retired Gujela. Lawrence Peak, big hair, Nawi, Nawabish, you will. County Attorney, Georgette Hogan, Kunkol. Commissioners, Paul Lukash. Nagya, a last one, of course, you will. The former member of law, Chippers, Kunkol of Elga. Ilkanishko, clerk in the quarter. Ilka. Uh, Madam Clerk and Recorder, uh, Kim Yarlett, Kolagaga, Dela District Court Clerk, Kun Karen Yarlett Molina, Kun Kolagaga, Azad Sap Salagish, which you live with them. A Jitish Kalas, who the Yukonish, Kojit D. Willie, Blaga Salagish, Twala the Soup, She Tagun Willie Larkin, Hey, say while I do that. Allah, executive session, good book, you all will leave sensitivity, good wish, you can. A little touch, a little on, log out. Solid wish, foolish. He walked his soul coming, Bath Joe was eight to hook. Transportation, eight committee, you all along, who? Big Senator Backbone, huh? Oh, Lahad, she, Solid, you see, you all that. Nah, she walked, all tied on. Is Balak Dajay Daga the one who absolved him? Is he all that? You talk a lot. No, can you watch a lot? Balak Dajay was eight chat, no one speak. You know, 
Senator Stewart, will they create last election? Could second term, Maun, Maulaja, could Nushkiwahe, who Maulaja, the Kapukum, Marcilla, Basco Wall, Basco Wall, who shot the Kishinini, Bob and Nate, school board up day one, Ashu, who lost his father, Mastigil and Mazu, they're all in. Card Bell took me on, Card Bell took me sheep. Get off my property. So, are you having a bad day, mate? Some people could buy a big go off to Sheila. Some people will listen to Belisha with cheap rabbit. Show that to him. Absal get dick chains, go on Camino, got a chance falling. Some people are bought, they are the couch, well, I'm just wasting my time and money. I got solidish, right dog, circuit, the solidish, the Haji Gazon. Was to Shilish, I was salt gal. Ilkish coat, the was eight to call of Salish. Now across this reservation, Salish. Now election British, hold all of them. Salish, of course, it bullets. I'm a little bit chill, Helen, and got all. The lay a lot of There's tribal issues that are at stake. Bullish, I wish, sell it. There's always pieces of legislation, tribal sovereignty. Malay was to be the Malays of the law, we just have an extreme with Malay law, sovereignty, sovereignty law, rights as a tribal member on this reservation. If it is called sovereignty, now again, sovereignty, but you look at the two. Malaysia will be Shabakalu, Kochik D. Malaysia, not the humble beginnings of 1981 82 voting rights case finished. Mazab said, Your Oka knows And then as our voting block grows in the state of Montana, Bobin, Governor Wap, Till the Bikraj, Congress. With that, Mr. Speaker, a whole month of solidation. We can support this legislative resolution. All right, thank you. <coughs> We're still in a 30 minute presentation. How much time do we have left? We have 16 minutes left. Any more comments? One, one. <coughs> Going twice. All right. That brings us to the the chairman. I believe what committee would this be? Secretary. 
uh, speaker. There was no referral to committee, so therefore it is in the hands of the sponsor uh, of the body. All right, let's we'll call on the sponsor, Senator Alden of the Bighorn District, for approval or disapproval for this LR. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Secretary, members of the body, um, off the top of my head, I can't remember what rule is, but uh, it falls upon the, the heads of the body right now. So, uh, two, um, two thirds uh, majority. So, <coughs> this time from the sponsor, I recommend that we pass this and you know, move to the body. All right. So, we recommend for approval from the sponsor. Brings us to the debate portion. Before I recognize the Senator goes ahead of the Arrow Creek District. I can make a motion to go into the executive, executive session. We have a motion on the floor to go into executive session. Second. Second by Senator Not Afraid. Question. Question by Senator Backbone of the Reno District. All those in favor of going into executive? <coughs> Are you in favor or? Okay. Okay, that brings us to 13. All those opposed? All those abstaining? 13.00. We will go into executive session pertaining to this LR. Yes.